Hi, good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, um, December 27, 2019 at 4 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Office's main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, this meeting will be televised, so if you come to the mic, please state your name and speak clearly so everyone can hear at home. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and are getting ready for a nice, safe, uh, happy new year. Um, please be safe when you're on the roads and call ahead for a ride if you need to. Um, we have a couple of items to go over tonight. Uh, old business would be to review and approve the remaining annual Select Board Board of Health license renewals, which I think we've done. Um, the list is you know, available on our website and here at town offices. And I think the only thing that was added was the um, red roof in, maybe a couple other site Charles, work things. Charles site work, yeah. Yep. So we have signed off on all that. We have voted all of these last meeting and we approved all the li liquor licenses last meeting. We just signed off on those um, to be mailed out. So. We should um, actually probably vote on the Red Roof Inn because that came in after the meeting. Okay. So um, I would make a motion to approve all the, um, again, just to approve, to du duplicate all the food service um, Common vehicular, thank you. Tobacco sales, indoor ice rink, hotel, motel, in disposal works installers. Awful, right? Got that. Awful. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, which includes the red roof in. So, um, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Just want to make sure we get yep. it done correctly. Okay. Great. So our next um, our next topic would be to receive recommendations from the uh, town um, administrator. Can we go to, oh, uh, just, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, please. Uh, selectman announcements. Yep. Um, well, seeing the chief is here, um, I'd like to take this time to announce publicly the work that Adam Sokolowski has done for the department and. Right. Uh, recovering funds for some of the businesses in town that lost them through uh, fraudulent that was, means. Yeah, um, a wonderful he's job. worked closely with the uh, folks in Boston. Huh? Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security. Um, and he's gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, and it just shows the professionalism of our police department right. and what they're doing for our citizens. And quite frankly, that maybe some of the other branches of law enforcement in the area have not been doing. So um, it's uh, worth noting. Uh, Absolutely. It's uh, very happy with what I've seen. And obviously, the, uh, the business in town that was greatly affected is really appreciative. I'm so, sure. Um, but, you know, it's, it was Adam, but it's, a lot of this is a reflection on our chief. Of course. So, it's, uh, thank you. The staff that he's put in place and what he's done. So, thank Good you. Good job. Thank you. And thank you, John. Yes. Yeah. Please extend our thanks to Adam as well. And all those, you know, who Everybody. helped to make that happen. Yeah. For sure. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Just want to make that note. Yeah. Appreciate so. it. Thank you for doing that. Um, so, just this was to receive the new business was to receive recommendations from the town administrator search uh, screening committee. Um, in, and interview town administrator candidates. And um, I'm aware we have two um, out of the search that, that has been done by um, Chief and, and Dave. We have two candidates coming forward tonight. Um, would be Casey uh, Warren and would be, who's a familiar name to people in Deerfield. And um, the other candidate is uh, Diana Schindler, who's our uh, acting town administrator right now. So. Um, do, you, do you guys want to add anything to that or just want to get... Well, you know, we, we had a number of candidates um, that came through, um, but in reviewing them, um, one of the things that I felt and I, I believe the chief felt was that uh, we have some known quantities here. Right. And sometimes it's better going with known than unknown. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we did have one candidate that was very vocal, mm -hmm. I would say, in his resume. <laughs> okay. But uh, it, uh, you know, it, 
there probably would have been a personality clash with a lot of people. It didn't win so. him a seat here tonight. Yeah. Okay. So, but good. So, you want to add anything to? You? Sure. I, I think the only thing to add is that we did receive nine applications that David and I did screen through. We got them as far and wide as Tennessee and South Carolina. Okay. And we had them from Eastern Massachusetts. We had them from New Hampshire and Vermont. And there really, was really two standout candidates that had experience within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but more specifically Franklin County and the town of Deerfield. Right. And you're obviously aware that Diana was one, mm -hmm. um, yep. and the other was our past interim town administrator, Casey Warren, expressed right. interest in returning to us. So those were the two standout of the nine, and their qualifications were nowhere in comparison to the other seven. Right. Yes. Okay. So it, to us, it was very simple in the meeting. Okay. So I think it made Dave and my life very easy. Right. So that's it for the, uh, the town administrator search committee. I think you have two amazing candidates to choose from. Great. By way of background for the residents that are sitting at home going, hey, Adam Sucklowski, what did he do? Right. Just to go in a little bit further, we don't want to discuss the business name. Correct. But a business in town suffered a $450,000 loss as part of a fraudulent scheme. And within 72 hours, Adam and a special agent from the Department of Homeland Security had seized nearly $400,000 of that money outgoing in accounts and recovered it. So as part of this crime identified in working with the federal government, the banks, a grand jury subpoena process through the federal government, several additional victims have been identified all across the country. These people are not out money anymore. Thankfully, it saved several people their retirement plans wow. that literally had lost. We're not talking about five or $10,000. One person right. was out $190,000 out of the retirement plan. Wow. So several victims were identified because Adam and Deerfield forwarded it over to the federal agent and started working this massive case. And all these victims started to be identified through the wire transactions as we started to seize this money. And it's turned into a, a, a massive event that's going now international. I'd also so. add, um, you know, you had thought long and hard about spending money to go out to Chicago, right? Yes. Because we, we worry about town, you know, taxpayer money and is this worth adventuring yes. out to do something like this? And I think it, you can elaborate a bit on this. I don't know as much, but I know that you went out to um, Chicago yes. this year for some training, yes. working with people from Homeland Security and around the country and the FBI and, um, and connections you made there help, helped along this way. So uh, it was a very good investment because you never know who you're going to meet. Yeah, so I did you. go out to Chicago and it was over $2,000 of town funds. And I think the board is well aware that I, I had severe uh, problems with that at the time. I didn't want to go. And I've heard from chiefs over the years that the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference is the most amazing training in the world. They fly in instructors from all across the world to the point where there's interpreters in the room and you literally have to put ear pieces in and you'll have interpreters translating from a person from Abu Dubai yep. teaching a police class, translating it into English to a person teaching in English and translating it into Arabic. Yep. So there's so many different countries there, instructors flown in from around the world and what you're referencing, Trevor, was I went to an international fraud class, and the guy that taught it, his name was Gary, and he was from the Department of Homeland Security. Well, until the end, I didn't realize he was from the Boston Division. Mm -hmm. They flew him in from Boston to Chicago because he had worked these cases all across the world, and more specifically, the United States. So when Adam first came to me about this case, I naturally referred him a yep. week and a half after I came back from the conference right over to Gary. Yep. It said, call this guy, he's amazing. And within 72 hours, we had over $400,000 identified. That's fantastic. So it was, it, it was amazing. And we'll see where it goes from there. Yep. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, everybody but knows that. I always that. think good, any good Ugh. training is worth it. Because Absolutely. Because you never know when it's going to come into, and it makes you have a better perspective. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know resources, resources, resources. That's I what know. it's all about. Yep. But you do have to do regular training, and I think this proves the case for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So right. getting back on task, I think you have two ca great candidates for, uh, right. for town administrator, and yeah. if you need anything, I'm here. Okay. I'm more than happy to hang around. It's Thank just you. amazing, though, that the picture from that conference, the, uh, your mo mother on Facebook identified the person in the front and didn't recognize the person four rows back. <laughs>
I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. Yes, most of you know I avoid Facebook. <laughs> yes, we investigate so many social media issues these I days. Know. I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have an Instagram account. I have nothing. Yeah. 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 Yep. The reports that come across my desk, I don't want one. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Chief. You're Thank welcome. you. So um, I guess we would move into the interview uh, part of the session. And, and Casey, would you come on up and we could ask you a few questions and tell us a little bit about yourself. Now, Casey is, was, and you'll probably fill in because this was before my time, but you've worked in the town of Deerfield before in this specific position. And um, I haven't had the pleasure to work with you yet. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to ask some questions and sure. hear about my your tenure. My name is Casey Warren. I I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Um, I worked in town in various positions, actually. I started in the selectman's office as an administrative assistant. And there was a restructuring in 2010. And that position became an executive assistant, working directly for the select board, board of health, and town administrator. And when I was offered the opportunity to step in as interim in 2014, um, I took it and eventually became a permanent town administrator here. Great. Um, do you um, do you want to go ahead with the questions, or do you, you can start, um, Mike? Well, you know, we have a format of questions, but mm -hmm. you know, of course, I never read well. Um, <laughs> sure, you go ahead, and just ask. Uh, right. What I'm asking: What have you learned since you've left here? What have I learned? So, one of the things I've learned is. Team building in a small environment is completely different than team building in a larger town. So I work in Asheville now. I've worked there for almost four years. And their town is much smaller. It's 1,753 people. It's a lot of positions are part-time. And it's, it's not necessarily as centralized as I experienced Deerfield. So communications is a little bit different. There's, no, there's two cell towers in town. Half of town, almost three quarters of town, do, has no cell service, unless you're on a hill. Um, so the first thing that I had to learn was how to communicate effectively with folks, and that led directly into team building. Mm -hmm. And it was a challenge because you didn't have people there all the time. So you had to make the contact with those people count and schedule things for the benefit of the whole at a time when you could get them all in. And that, took a, that was a little bit different than what I had experienced here. Another thing I learned is, is a radically smaller budget than Deerfield's. And your, how you deploy resources is very important. And there's a, to some extent, Ashfield really is interested in grants, and but not necessarily able to manage all the background of a grant. Mm -hmm. So we we worked very we've worked very closely with the COG mm -hmm. and other groups to assist us with that. And so learning to to work on a budget that's made up differently and deployed differently is a is a source of it's a skill it's a skill building opportunity. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, do, can I go? Yeah. Okay. Um, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so Deerfield has many great opportunities and challenges ahead. Um, what have been some of your greatest successes and challenges in this field? Um, how did you deal with them, the challenges? And what do you in terms look, of projects or? Whatever. Whatever you look back on and say, that, that was pretty good or that was really, man, if I could have done that differently. Yeah. So challenges and accomplishments. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. exactly. <laughs> I think some of my biggest challenges have been to bring people together with common communication. And we, I've had a lot of help from my staff. I learned things from my staff about how to communicate in a way that everybody can follow that's more modern. We, one of the things that my town clerk who also does a lot of the work assisting me, mm -hmm. um, we went to a mostly electronic system for information for the Board of Selectmen. So okay. 
what we did, our transition was about, it took about two years. And first, everything was provided electronically as PDF documents, generally two, day, two to three days before a meeting. Then it evolved to, instead of printing all the paper out, we, we bought used computers mm -hmm. that were functional, but they really only needed to be there to, to read. Yeah. And everything goes, started going on the computers, so it cut down on the use of paper. We weren't able to do that with the finance committee and their budget meetings, but we were able to reduce some of that use and allow the select board to become more familiar with that medium if they weren't. Yeah. Um, another thing that we did is we, cre we created, and it's something I took from Deerfield up to Ashfield, was a financial team. Mm. Um, we had some turnover in a couple positions, so it was a little rough at, at certain points, but the purpose of the financial team is to really monitor what's going on in town, spending of money, what money's coming in, free cash, yep. you know, monitoring your, monitoring your budget and enterprise funds, and really keeping track of where each element of the financial team is at any given time. Yep. And so one thing we learned from two difficult year-end closures was quarterly meetings. We have our next quarterly meeting on Friday mm -hmm. because cash reconciliation, and it happens differently up there. Yeah. I mentioned that we have part-time people. Right. So cash reconciliation isn't on the same schedule as it was in Deerfield. So we had to come up with a method to make sure that we are in, in a place where we understand all these elements because they're all in a, in a radar screen moving at different speeds right. is how I think about it. And so that, that became a key takeaway from several meetings. Quarterly meetings, have your paperwork ready. Mm -hmm. We're going to deconstruct what just happened. It took us about two months more than it could have mm -hmm. based on two year enclosures that, was re that were really difficult. One year enclosure followed another and it, it was complicated. There were new staff and we had to figure out how to punt with that. Meaning how much revenue you had coming in versus how much you had going out in bills and Not stuff. just that, but where DLS was was taking that revenue and making adjustments because they had to make adjustments in the gateway system. Right. Um, yep. There were a couple key elements of the account of, of revenue in mm -hmm. that was affected based on our town meeting and revenue out based on town meeting yep. that were problematic. So we had to go back. I had to have my education in how enterprise funds affect free cash. Yes. Because <laughs> they're supposed to be separate, but they right. aren't always. Right. So it's a learning experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. And what I try to encourage is, yeah, we run into these challenges. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. Another challenge was we've had a couple personnel challenges come up. And they've taught me and another department <coughs> head quite a bit about how to proceed when there is not only a challenge to your authority, but a challenge to how you do your job, mm -hmm. you know, what people perceive. And so there's a bit of, of unpacking when it comes to that, your own reactions. Sure. But laying everything out and creating a process, I think, is, is a good way to react to that challenge. And that's what we did. We laid out, OK, this is the pro We hadn't written it down. This is the process. But when you write it down, it becomes much more concrete, and you can put it into a habit. And so that's been something that I'm encouraging them to do. Because there's a few of us that, that manage more than one person, not everybody. But if you can unpack what those challenges can be, look like and then figure out, OK, here's your path. You don't necessarily have to be perfect on the path. But if you can st stick to mm -hmm. the elements of the path that keep you progressing, you've got a good chance to succeed. Great. Do you have any questions? Keep no, going. I've I've worked with both, and I know the work history and experience with both. So I'm all set. I don't have any questions. Okay. Um. Let's skip down to number six. Yep. Go ahead. Um. How would you facilitate, coordinate all departments? committees and select board to work together as a team on projects and activities and 
uh, more basically uh, function as a procurement officer for the town of Deerfield and ensuring that things are done correctly. So let me rephrase to make sure I understand what you're asking me. How do I, how would I manage projects with, with a team working on these projects and then manage procurement around those projects? Yes. Okay. The piece of working with the team is identifying what the team goals are going to be and how to execute them. And they may be very small steps to start and larger steps as you progress. But I would hope that there would be some sort of um, basic plan in place to that outlines the project and how it's going to how you expect it to progress off, and that's what an engineer will give you, mm -hmm. depending on your project. Um, likewise, there's a progression, not just in identifying what needs to be done, and there's various places that that can be delegated, depending on the project. I don't know, I don't have a specific project mm -hmm. in front of me, but delegating various pieces so that you can come back in the working group and say, okay, you've accomplished this, you've accomplished that, where are we with this? Because all of that is gonna lead right back into your procurement. Your procurement is going to follow a similar path, probably concurrent path, mm -hmm. to reach the goal of various parts of that procurement. If it's a very large project, it becomes very complicated. And so there's a real, there's a real planning phase that goes with the group. You know, we, we are here in order to get this procurement to a certain phase, we've got to understand that this date is really key mm -hmm. to putting out information, like an, RD, an RFP for land, for mm -hmm. instance. You know, you have, you have to have certain things in place in your paperwork before you can even send that out. Right. And it's very helpful to delegate some of those proofreading issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you want, to, you want somebody else to look at it. I've learned that. Mm -hmm. When you look at something 13 or 14 times, you miss a word here and there. So that's a key piece of working in a team is, hey, can you read this? Who's the best person in the team to read it and see those mistakes sure. that you don't necessarily, you don't make intentionally, they just happen. Yep. In terms of getting the project to the go stage, honestly, it depends on the project. Um, what I did in Nashville was we needed new tax collecting software. So there's a grant, it was a community compact grant. I wrote it. And I had talked to the grant coordinator, gave him the basic rundown, and he said, all right, write it up, and I'll send you my questions. So, but there was also this element of procurement involved because it was over a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. So before I could even give them a number for the grant, I had to, basic, I had to do a basic procurement. So the procurement I did within that threshold, it was 30,500. The procurement I did was not the same procurement I would end up doing if we got the grant. It was get quotes. Here's what we need, give me a quote. Built the grant paperwork, the application, and sent it off. The turnaround time on that was less than six days. He was really fast. He knew that we needed that money yep. um, because we knew we weren't gonna get it in the budget process. So this was last year. Mm -hmm. And so he had a couple questions for me, and he basically said, what is, what, is the process to act, what is the process of what you're doing? And strangely enough, it was in the quote. I just looked at the quote and said, okay, I asked a question, but they identified steps, which was really useful. Yes. I took those steps, put it into response in the email, and the next, it was the day after Christmas last year that, I got, that we found out we got the grant. Yes. Once we found that out, then I conducted the procurement and the procurement was the official sealed responses. Right. These were the parameters, this is what had to be there, you had to have certain signed documents, et cetera. Those, those are the requirements in the state regs and best practice, not all its regs, it's best practice too. And I, what I got for feedback was a good price. It fit, within, it fit mostly within our budget. There was a couple outliers that we didn't have, so I found money in another account that could help us with that. Mm -hmm. We ended up implementing it by July 1st, and we've gone through Ashfield is um, quarterly billing, so we've gone through one billing cycle so far. We're just starting the next. We're sending the bills out on Monday for the second, third and fourth quarter, sorry. 
but the change in billing structure and ease of use and just the look on my collector's face when she first realized how much easier it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Now, there were things that were challenging. Sure. But, and, and I told her, write them down. We have to report on this. Mm -hmm. And so she wrote me some notes. And I watched her. I would come in. I would check it as they were doing that on board. Yeah. And so what really came out of it was, is she said to me later, because she had kind of pushed back with me about that. She said to me later, she said, I'm glad you forced me to do this because if we hadn't, I wouldn't be able to focus on the myriad of other things I have to do. Right. So to some extent, that was validation. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, I see an efficiency and effectiveness that's happening that wasn't happening before. Right. And that was a project that required a procurement. And it was because it was grants, it had to be exactly right. Right. And so the first okay. thing you do, go back and plan, and then step by step watch it evolve. And if you have to step in and make a change, which is what I had to do, mm -hmm. by finding extra money to pay for the old software company to give us our information, yep. I did. And we had a whole conversation about whether we needed to pay them more money for other information and ultimately didn't have to. But in order to give the resources to the collector, I was willing to do that, and it turned out, I think it's a very good move for Ashfield. Right. So. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. So um, what do you believe are the biggest or most challenging obstacles facing communities of our size, or um, which strategies would you employ to ultimately overcome them and improve the services to Deerfield? So like, what do you think are what are your challenges there? What do you think, how do you think they'll be different here? What are you, what are you dealing with? It's I difficult. think all towns, especially in Western Massachusetts, face economic challenges. Mm -hmm. The biggest draw on your taxpayers is real estate. Everybody has that same pot of money. It's a very difficult pot of money to manage because to some extent, especially in a regional school system, each town is, is not competing, but relying on those same dollars. And so all of a sudden it goes into a pot and you have to evaluate how, those, how that money gets used. So the advantage in the valley down here is the access to economic development is higher. Yeah. The hill towns have a different challenge. Their economic development tends to be cottage businesses, things you can do in your home. So one of the biggest problems they have is access to, to outside purchasers, outside sales. Right. Asheville doesn't have broadband. Right. So this whole broadband project that I had to get up to speed in six months about mm -hmm. when I first started, and that was a heavy lift. Yeah. But this whole broadband project is going to open new opportunities for the folks that do run cottage businesses. The flip of that is how do we make that, how do, we, how do they grab that money and how do we create an economic support system that gives them that ease of access and still protect the character mm -hmm. of Asheville? That's a big question for everyone. Yeah. In Deerfield, my ex previous experience was there were opportunities from, for some economic development, but there seemed to be a shuffle. And I think it's a shuffle in how work is happening in the valley and viable businesses, how they're moving around in the valley. Um, but to some extent, there's also an access issue mm -hmm. because the western part of the state isn't necessarily recognized for its economic opportunity. There's a lot of infrastructure that hasn't quite gotten into place. Right. And so I think because you have two different mindsets, a Hilltown mindset is very different than a valley mindset. And their access to economic opportunity is going to look different than Deerfield. Mm -hmm. But it still boils down to the same thing. Real estate can't support all the services. Right. So there has to be a way to build sources of revenue. Gain growth. Good. And growth, yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, Considering in the course of the day the town administrator could interact with the public, federal agencies, state agencies, state regulators, select board, chair of committees, legal advisors, support staff, department heads, 
How would you ensure and guarantee all parties are communicating appropriately, accurately, and on a timely basis? Please provide examples. What methods have you used to effectively communicate with your, uh, with your boards? With my boards? Or yeah, your board. Well, you talked to, there was a bit of a challenge, like com communicating, right? You it don't can have, be you know, because of this broadband access right. issue. Yeah. Um, many people have DSL up there, like I do at home. Okay. Um, I think it's funny, there's, there's two camps. There's the camp that doesn't have anything and is rather resistant to it. And it can be age, it can be just, yep. it's too scary. Yep. I know that person, she's my mother. Yep. She just doesn't wanna do that. <laughs> and then there's the people that are young retirees or young people living in town that are used to using the internet and cell phones and all sorts of technological connectivity. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is we get people's email addresses and we send out emails notifying them of things. What I do specifically with the boards during budget season and finance committee and the select board meet together, they have joint budget meetings. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a packet. That packet does go out electronically. They have paper when they sit at the desk. But changes that come in, the free cash notifications, anything that comes in from DLS that's training or could be a good article mm -hmm. lives, gets to them. They get an email. If they can't get an email, they get a phone call. One of us calls them and says, hey, this is available if you want to pick it up while we're open. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I have two new finance committee members. So one thing that I worked on with them is I had one person who didn't have a great understanding of um, levy capacity. It came up in a meeting. Yeah. So I pulled down the primer on it. And I, as I was pulling that down, I saw other articles on DLS's website and thought, okay, this could be really useful. I put it into a binder and took it to the finance committee meeting mm -hmm. and said, okay, try these documents first. And at the same time, we're gonna create a backspace on the website that all of you can get to if you wanna read it online. Because I have one guy who's a former computer programmer. He doesn't read anything in paper unless you stick it under his nose. Right. So, and he's the one that he had already started that work. He helps us with our website. He had started that work for emergency management. So we knew we could do it. We also knew that the people in that group can get there. It's the people in that group, in other groups that can't necessarily get there. Mm -hmm. So another form of communication that we use is um, similar to your townwide communication system. Ashfield uses Blackboard Connect. And so certain messages go out reminding people of town events, town-sponsored programs. Um, in this case, there's a town-sponsored event that I just put a message out for emergency issues. We use that as a, as a form of connectivity for folks that don't use the regular access we do. Things that are definite communication, mail. The day of a meeting, I usually will pick, go through my email and find if there's things that I haven't sent out and I think the board may wanna look at them. They, that gets added to their electronic document and the mail list changes. And so, because there are times where they may, need, they may see a need themselves to react to something that's in the mail. But by and large, there's a formula of communication. If you can't reach them by email, give them a call and, and or write a letter. We do that too. There's a, still a lot of paper that moves mm -hmm. through. Yeah. But ultimately, it's making sure that you reach out and share that information. I get a lot of people who want information about their um, account statuses for their appropriations and special funds. And so I, my accountant, she gets back to me very quickly. I only have her for about eight hours a week. So she and I communicate with email and PDFs quite a bit, and that allows us to share that information more effectively. But you also, there's one person who can't read those PDFs. So he gets a copy in his box and he gets an email. He can read his email. He gets his email and says, go look in your box. I left it for you. So I hope that answered it. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what support structure do you see as vital to carrying out the duties of the town administrator? Uh, what qualities would you look for in an assistant and um, that would complement your skills? Because we're not all perfect, right? So people have certain skills. Some have deficiencies. What do you find as a... Um, what would you look for in an assistant 
to complement your skills? What I would look for in, in an assistant is somebody who can support the activities of the office to give the town administrator capacity. And so certain skills are useful. Ease of communication electronically and through other mediums because that can be very useful to get the word out quickly. We see that on social media all the time. Um, the ability to write quickly and effectively and not perseverate, as a friend of mine says. <laughs> um, a person who can understand a fairly type A work style. I do have a type A work style. On the other hand, that's my big, one of my biggest challenges. So, Explain I, that a little bit. What do you mean? A type A work style? Yeah. My type A work style is I often forget the social niceties. So somebody will come into the office or I'll walk in the, for when I'm walking into work and say, say to somebody, I need this from you. Because my brain has already processed about three things I need to get done the minute I set foot on the ground out of my car. And then it hits me when I get that blank look. Oh, I forgot to say good morning. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell people that. I, I actively tell people, I forget the social niceties when there's something on my mind because if I don't get it out, I will forget it because mm -hmm. there's 18 other things that are in my head sort of on my radar screen, do this, do that, do the other thing. So a type, to me, a type A work style is sort of hitting the balls in the air mm -hmm. so that you don't forget, so the balls don't fall off the radar screen. Yep. <laughs> and it, it's useful if people can figure, if I can get somebody who can figure out that work habit, that doesn't mean I don't ratchet it back. It just means that it's just my inclination. Mm -hmm. um, and I inherited that. So that's why it's a challenge. I have to make sure that I try not to do that. But other useful attributes in any assistant, no matter what level, is the ability to respond quickly, to maintain a certain their own capacity in what they're doing. I, f I find it's setting up a work schedule where you can work on something for a couple of hours and then stop and do something else. Because after a while, your brain will get tired, at least mine does. Yep. And if I shift gears, I can be more fresh for that other thing that needs to happen because inevitably, there's five to eight things on my desk that need to happen. And so I mentally will check off the, the boxes. Sometimes they're even written down. And I can check off that box. But the point is, is if I can build capacity by switching gears, and if somebody that I'm working with can understand that that's what I'm doing mm -hmm. to be effective, then that's somebody that, that can help the office overall be effective. Right. Because what we're here to do is help services be provided to the town, be effective in providing the select board and the other committees with the information they need to make good decisions, and provide that link in, in public service that is functional to what everybody out there who's paying taxes wants. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, what areas of growth do you, uh, do you think you need in professional development? Hmm. Well, one of the biggest things is actually keeping up with your MCPPO, your purchasing. Mm -hmm. I just took my recertification because they changed the rules. And that's one thing that I do dedicate time to because it's important. And a lot of folks I've met in the recent past don't necessarily disagree with me, but I find that there's a good way to, to figure, figure out how to what the course of action can be if you're facing an expenditure of funds that hits a certain threshold mm -hmm. or doesn't for that matter. Right. So you were recertified? I took my recertification. I need one more class um, next year. It, it isn't up until 2020. Oh, no, so I, know, I, I, I yeah. recognize. I thought you were certified in 2017. I was. So. I was, but now you have to be recertified right. every three years. Yes. So, so you're doing it ahead I'm, of time. Yeah, I'm working. I'm working it through because I knew I needed the time. Great. Um, time. Another thing is it's professional development and key places. And so I recognize that personnel management is one of the hugest places to pursue professional development. Yep. And it's so, something so. that is often the hardest time, hardest 
to make space for because we don't always get those opportunities out here. So it's useful to belong to the Mass Municipal Managers Association mm -hmm. and the Massachusetts HR Association. We get a lot of information that streams through our emails, but if you take the opportunities to go to some of these conferences, and they're one day, often one day things, you can really network with people that can help you solve problems. Right. The MMA conference is another one. That's a professional, that's necessary. Right. And I know people that don't go to it. And I walk away generally with an understanding of what things could happen that could be useful. Right, you can always so, start there. Yeah. Right, and there's, there's other things. I mean, th there's other things that aren't necessarily municipally geared mm -hmm. that can be useful too. Yeah. It's just, you're always limited by time. Mm -hmm. So my professional development, if, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would go back to school for my MPA. Right. But that's sort of a pipe dream. I understand that what I'm doing is really what they're teaching me. I'm just doing it in a manner that isn't quite so formulaic. Right. So. Uh, let's see. In Deerfield, we currently have a um, flat. Hang on one second. Flat fee system with our. Oh, with Lisa Mead. Oh, right. Sorry. Oh, yeah. It took me a minute to read this and understand what it was. Um, we currently have a flat fee si system with our with our town council. Um, how do you see yourself working with town council? Is it a close relationship or only call when you have a problem? Like, what what do you think? What do you? What has your experience been like? My experience is twofold. My experience when I worked here mm -hmm. with Lisa is very responsive. If there was a question that I felt rose to the level of legal, legal assistance and support, I called. If Lisa wasn't around, somebody else was assigned. Yep. Contracts were handled. I mean, she had that office very well organized to handle various types of questions that are Mm -hmm. that are that we run into every day um, but there's there's something to be said although it's not necessarily my inclination there's something to be said for planning your discussions with council because mm -hmm. that can cut down on the amount of time that you are actually talking about certain subjects because I take a list I know my current town council there's certain days she's not available so I make a list of what I need to discuss. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we, we settle on a time to meet over the phone, those are the things that we discuss. And if I need further assistance, then I will get back in touch. But yeah. I structure that. So there's something to be said for, for approaching council when it hits, when there's yeah. something that just hits at 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. And there's something to be said for planning those discussions so you can streamline. Right what you're discussing, you know, what might have happened mm -hmm. over that period. Council is really your source of support. Mm -hmm. And that, that first defense, if there's ever a, a litigious situation, and right. my view of dealing with council is always to be, to be proactive and collaborative right. and listen because she's the one with the degree. Right, right, and experience, sure, yeah. Okay. Um. I have a certain style of management that I've experienced over the years. Um, one, I don't like things sugar-coated. And two, I don't like smoke blowing up certain parts of my anatomy. How would you handle that with the board? I tend to be very forthright. If I'm not comfortable saying something on camera, I will get my point across. Um, I've learned that silence can be golden except when it's critical. And so there are times I'm not shy. Um, but diplomacy is respectful. And my communication style hasn't drastically changed. But as I work through my own personal flaws, I find myself catching those places and learning from the experiences I've had. So 
most of the time I'm very straightforward. It's just how I present it could be a little more, it's more gentle than it might have been before. <laughs> Good. Well, it, um, but that's a constant challenge. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, For somebody just... who's a type A personality, that is a constant challenge. So I'm very aware that that is my work. You know, it's, mine is just if something is bad happening or something, I want to know about it right away. Yes. Whether it's about me personally or if it's whatever it is, so that it gives me time to react to it and not have to hear it somewhere else. And so that's, that's a key piece of communication, making sure that the select board knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, I think that's key for us all. Right, right. But there's situations where you often don't know all the information. I mean, I had one of the town staff loss, recently lost his, his parent, and it sort of hit us all like a ton of bricks, but the person that was in direct communication, the staff member that was in direct communication to the gentleman this happened to, we all sort of had our quick five-minute powwow, and then I notified the board. I sent them a text because it's effective. They respond. And basically said to them, when I know more information, I will let you know, but you need to know that this person mm -hmm. passed away. And down, I, my experience in Deerfield was we did text a lot. We did share information quickly because it was effective and we knew everybody had the capability. Mm -hmm. um, I can do that in the town hall in Ashfield and I can do that in front of Sanderson Academy in Ashfield. I have to, I have to watch it. So if I need to get a text out, it's got to happen before I go home. Yeah. Um, but the flip of that is, is there, you have to keep people up on what's going on. And so my approach to that is simply, I, if I send an email, it's BCC'd. You guys don't get to talk about it unless you make a conscious choice to talk about it, which is not a good idea. Right. And I tell people that. I learned that from my old assistant. BCC allows me to share the information. You can think about it if you want to call me. Great. That's what I tell my select board. And sometimes I get a call and sometimes I don't. Um, but it's key to either make that phone call, send that email, or find a way to get the information out there so that you aren't left in the, that I keep the unknown from being so scary. It's already scary, the unknown's already scary for the rest of us. Um, it's best if you hear about it first. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? So what are the biggest projects you're looking at right now besides the wastewater treatment plant? The wastewater treatment plant. I was at that <laughs> session with Joe. With, it's uh, actually not a joke because we have another, uh, another one just like it that needs to get done. Well, so. I, I, knew, I knew that, but <laughs> I was at the Joe Comerford's um, yes. wastewater treatment, and I was there. listening because yeah. it's, it's very interesting. I saw some of the beginnings of that, the origin of that when I was here. Yep. And now I'm working in a place that has completely different challenges. Yes. The wastewater treatment plant system in Ashfield is a completely different animal. So it's a different type of information for me to assimilate. Yeah. I do know that you had, you have certain things in place. Yeah. But what was the progression for all? What's, what's your yeah. experiential progression for this? So, um, yeah, we have been working on it as long as I've been here. And much longer, right? You've been here, everybody's been studying it and looking at it, and we finally committed to just raising our rates to make sure that we were grant um, eligible. Ad, eligible. Okay. Um, so we, we got those in a place where we could, and we, we created an enterprise fund so we could start, um, you know, putting some money aside for, mm -hmm. the, for the capital we knew that was coming, the expenses that were coming. Um, Trevor hustled really hard, and we got um, a really good USDA grant and loan. When, when yeah, you mentioned loan. that. Yep, and okay. um, at a good rate and a um, and a grant of two point six million. Yeah. Um, so we're out we're, of a not a very big pot. Right. There hasn't yeah. been any money for infrastructure. As I, you know, yeah. Nobody's spending money. So um, hopefully, you know, we can continue that relationship with USDA. We're we're kind of in the trial period right now. We're we're getting the um, engineering done. We've signed the contract for engineering to get that work done. So mm -hmm. we're changing our aeration, putting a headworks in, changing over from chlorine to a UV, um, 
I'm going to put in a secondary clarifier. We're repairing our own, the only clarifier we have right now we're repairing. And um, so we're doing a, a kind of a bypass system right now mm -hmm. to get that going. So there's like two projects that are starting. One's kind of that initial emergency repair. And then the, the, the design work is starting for the, for the other part. And then once that's kind of all done in several years, um, or in concurrence with that, we're looking at the old Deerfield plant deciding what to do there. We'll have engineers come in and look at whether we replace it, repair it, or we shut it down and pump it to Deerfield, mm -hmm. bring, it, bring it down here and process it here. But both of those are very expensive and you know they have pluses and minuses to each. So we gotta yeah. kinda weigh all that out and see what to do with that um, and try and get help from, from the other partners in town that, that you know utilize it a lot. So right. we're having kind of discussions on that coming up very shortly. So. Um, so that that's you know that's one big thing we have complete streets we mm -hmm. you know uh, we need to we're working on sidewalks we're in talks with DOT about taking over uh, some of the street Sugarloaf Street uh, Park Street Conway Street because all that is state owned yes. state highway we can't really do anything with it um, we want to expand or revamp our common so I read um, about that. You have better crosswalks and people are safe there's ADA compliance we want to develop the Leary lot into parking, mm -hmm. more parking available for Elm Street and the businesses that are moving in. Um, find somebody to take over the old Cumberland Farms and do some economic development there. We have uh, econ economic development opportunities at the pickle plant again. And we, had, we were trying to get the RFP out so we can sell yeah, it. We have a lot of interested buyers. Resurveying it a bit with some interested Good. buyers. Um, you know, we have, unfortunately, we lost Channing Beat. So we're yes. hoping that you know, we're trying to push for economic development yeah. there, and ho hopefully somebody can, we can go in there. We have senior housing that we're trying to get, still work on, mm -hmm. um, and we have senior center. We have to. That's evaluate. what I was going to. Yeah, so our senior center. Yep. How is it working with buildings? Because buildings are always a challenge. I know buildings yes. in any town well, are. Actually, My John's colleagues and I talk about building that. assessment committee, but we're hopefully moving forward with that, trying to get the assessment. So we have, we have more information to make good decisions, long-term yeah. decisions, because it's big money. It and, is. And, and, we, and we have to make sure we're really matching our needs to um, what we're spending. And then, as you know, it's just a general squeeze of money. You know, the school, schools take almost 70% of our budget, um, and, you know, our total budget, and we're trying to deliver services on the other 30%. And, it's, it's tough. It's really tough because there's not a lot of growth. And, um, you know, so we're just kind of pressure all the way around. We have you good know, opportunities and good challenges. Yeah. Both, yeah. You know. I, I mean, there's a lot happening. Yes, that's the, there is. That's the problem. Yes. And I, we, and I, get, so, I was reading through a couple of town reports, so I noticed that yeah. there's a lot of activity. We're trying to work on climate change because, you know, um, it's, you have more frequent events, so you have, you know, our infrastructure, our roads, you know, we have washouts mm -hmm. and, it's, and culverts. And, Your MVP and the washouts grants. and roads are mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the problem is, it, is that the federal government isn't, doesn't have a lot of um, programs right now. I mean, hopefully that will change relatively soon. But, you know, in the next year or two, there's just still going to be no money. Um, it's going to take a while. And so we're working through the MVP program mm -hmm. that you're familiar with. I know you've been to yes. a lot of mm -hmm. meetings. Yes. And, um, um, Ashfield is an MVP community, and that's yep. what we're start and starting so to build. We're working really hard with that, and we're, um, you know, we're a key member for the lead community for the Mosquito District. Mm -hmm. So we can try to do some water management there. And, you know, there's just a lot of balls in the air um, on, on the whole water thing. So. And, and that is something we have to address, and that is going to cost us a lot of money. So we're trying to figure out ways to, um, you know, finance that through different different opportunities, and and how we address it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there are long term needs. Our recycling has gone way up, and you know, expenses. That's happened and, in every yeah. town. Yep. We've but noticed when it we too. were at the MMA, it looked like it was a temporary. You know, that's more temporary because they, they are doing recycling facilities um, in New York and Maine. And Trevor and I went to a couple um, cl classes on that. And it, and it wasn't as negative, long-term negative. But we have to have some way to adjust. The right. sledge situation is long-term, and mm -hmm. we got to figure out that. And um, That's a big challenge for the entire yeah, county. Yeah, yeah. it's so. countywide. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to know about um, and, and investigate and figure out what, what's the trend. How, how can we, it's not so much, it used to be when you went to the MMA, you could, how much money did you bring back? You know, how, what, what did you get? You know, a couple hundred thousand here no. and what, now it's just like how much money can we avoid having to spend? What are the trends? I like that. You know, are you being informed enough? How can you navigate the town? And that's really what we need is someone that's willing to get out and hustle to see how we're going to navigate through spending the least amount of money for some of these things that we're faced, mm -hmm. you know, the challenges. And how, and how do we think out of the box? Because these, you know, the same regulations apply to Deerfield as they do to Boston. And it, it just, it drives you wacko because we don't have the staff, we don't have the capacity. And so how do we, how do we think creatively to, to you know, manage, mm -hmm. really? And how, do, and how do we take our opportunities? How do we take our resources that we do have and, and manage to be better, more efficient and more effective? And um, I mean, we have, you know, every time we think about something or I think about something, I think, how can we do better? How can we get from A to B faster and, fa and, be and less money? Or how do we avoid that expense? And, and it really, it takes teamwork and it takes, pulling in all the members of the community that have something to add. And, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's where I think we really need the support, is you know, the ability to build teams and how do we manage together? How do we float mm -hmm. our boat, everybody's boat yep. in town? Okay. So that's where I'm coming from. I think that's all I had. Great. So well, thank, thank you very you for much for the in. opportunity to yes. talk to you. Well, good to talk to you. We'll talk to you Thank soon. you, Casey, for coming in. Thank you. Good luck. Thank and you for I the interest. It. Sure. See Thank you, you Casey. Do so you want to take a minute, and then I'll um, I get our next applicant. Mm -hmm. All right. Friday. Woohoo! Friday night. What's Print that off again. Do you need another copy? No, no, I don't. Okay. Here? Yeah, that's fine. Candy? Oh, no. Thanks. I'm so hungry. Uh, we're almost done. Yep. Um, do you want to go through the whole thing again with her, or how do you want to handle this? Because she's already been through it once. Mm hmm. They all asked her. Um,
When do you want to make a decision? Do you want to make it tonight or do you want to move to a Monday or whatever? I'm I'm ready to make a decision today. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't, it's not going to make a difference, much difference. Nope. I don't know if you want to think about it or you're good to go. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome. I mean, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I don't welcome. know why I'm saying welcome to you. Welcome mm -hmm. back to you all. <laughs> okay. Um, hello. Thank so you for hello. having me. You're welcome. So, welcome you know, I know again. we inter interviewed you just not that long ago, so these questions are probably very similar um, to what you've heard. <laughs> okay. Because they are the same questions you've heard. Um, okay. Maybe and I'll have different answers now. You may, with all the experience, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, feel free to pass over these. or whatever. We may just jump around because we've, we know you so well. We work yeah. with you all the time. Yeah, we, please. Let's, but we let's want to be fair and, to get and to know each other even more. If that's possible. Is it possible? Let's try. <laughs> so welcome. I won't ask you to tell me about yourself because I know you. Are you um, sure there's nothing well, else maybe you'd like to know? <laughs> maybe. So Deerfield has many great opportunities and challenges ahead. You know that working mm -hmm. here. Um, so what have what have been your most um, your greatest successes and challenges in this field, and how how would you deal with them? Well, okay. So I think I've talked to you before about some of my yes. projects. I think I guess I want to talk a little bit about what I feel have been some of my successes here great. while I've been here over the last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had a lot going on and a lot of transition. Um, but we've had many projects as well that have been in process and have come to fruition. Um, I feel that I, despite the um, challenge of being perpetually understaffed, mm -hmm. um, we've still managed in my office to uh, do the, you know, the MVP projects. We've done green community projects. We've done complete streets. I mean, all the grant projects that we're mm -hmm. working on. Um, we've continued to manage those. We've also done, I feel we're working on a lot of the, um, you know, some of the, the, the work that with personnel policies and capital planning and mm -hmm. things like that that have been sitting for some, for some time and languished and needed to be updated. So we've been working on a lot of that. We have a, a good solid draft of personnel policies that are being put in front of the new personnel board. Um, the capital planning committee, as, as Carolyn knows and you know, have been uh, talking about not only their current plan, but sort of looking at the future plan. And we've been looking at a, uh, the potential of doing a different format for that. Um, so I think all of those things have been um, some of the successes that right. I've had. Yeah. I think some of the challenges here have been that you have a long-standing tradition of, you know, I, I would say more of a, um, where the board has done a lot of the administration, mm -hmm. where you're used to kind of rolling up your sleeves and actually digging in and doing the work. And so I think that's been hard for, for all of us to navigate, and especially my, you know, for me to navigate on my side, <clears throat> um, speaking for myself, of... Yeah how to continue to keep the energy going around these projects and keep them moving um, and stay focused despite all of the varying um, uh, different um, ideas and visions you all have and things that you want to accomplish and then also things that I know are have been sitting here for some time that you're trying to get done that are time sensitive right. um, I feel you know we've gotten the wastewater treatment thing going we've mm -hmm. gotten the complete streets thing going we've got the town buildings assessment going um, you know a lot of these things are going to give you more and more answers to information that data you've been trying to get so that you can do additional projects so right. I think that um, you know that that's been some of the challenges in trying to um, navigate how I normally operate as an administrator to try to get work done and how the town of Deerfield is sort of used to seeing the administration right. work and obviously you know because it's been us that we've had right. <laughs> some challenges over that and how I don't sometimes you don't feel that the communication is there or I or maybe I'm not include you know giving you all of the information about the litany of of you know the mm -hmm. myriad of things 
that are going on because there are so many of them and sometimes I myself, you know, get lost in it. But right. I feel really good about the fact that everything is moving forward. I mean, it's all like, you know, very much incrementally small yeah. little movements, but I feel nothing has been, um, you know, there's been things we've been talking about. We, you know, we want to get going, but nothing has slipped. Everything's moving forward. Yeah. Um, it just hasn't been, you know, as quickly as, as I would have liked. Right. And I think some of that is staffing, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, no excuses. I, I want to, you know, yeah. we, we want to keep moving. Okay. Okay. Um, what methods have you used effectively to communicate with your board? What methods have not worked well, and what would you do to change them? So I think part of it, I've been trying to figure that out. As I just said, I've been, I've um, given you, I'm trying to, I've been giving you written reports. Um, I try to update you during the meetings. I um, formed a couple weeks ago. I did try to do, we, we talked about, or you had talked about last year, trying to stay more included in the budget process and mm -hmm. try to stay you know, involved sort of from the beginning and know what that would look like. So I think, I feel like you know, we orchestrated this tri-board meeting last week. I feel that was a, a way to try to keep you engaged with the other boards and vice versa, and also to keep um, you know, so that I can cons be speaking to you, you know, consistently messaging to the other boards what your message is and that you can be saying that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one of the things that I've been trying to do, um, you know, stay consistent with the department head meetings because I think, again, it's all, it's very circular. A lot of the department heads do communicate with you directly and you're in the loop um, mm -hmm. on some departments more than others. So I've been trying to make sure the department heads are also kept in the loop about a lot of, um, or, you know, all, of, all if, if not all of many of the activities that are going on in your um, department so they can make sure that we're all working together mm -hmm. in that respect. Good. Yep. Good. Um, well, you talked a bit about this, that how would you facilitate and coordinate all departments, committees, and select boards to work together as a team? Um, I know that you just talked a lot about that, but we, um, how do you envision continuing that with the sewer project and, you know, senior center stuff, and how mm -hmm. do you, what would your kind of skeleton be of, of kind right. of putting together a team for that? Well, for that part, of, part of what I have been, I mean, I've been going to a lot of those meetings, you know, I've been going to the BOO meetings, going to yep. the Council on Aging, going to the, the Tri-County meetings, going to um, Capital Planning meetings, Personnel sewer Board stuff. meetings, so, you know, all of those um, is a way that I'm trying to, um, again, make sure that we're all connected. Um, I think that I need to, you know, obviously if we, if this, if we move forward from here, we've talked about staffing, you know, I'd like to, I think having additional staff in this office, there'd be the ability to delegate, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, some of the things that I'm working on that are more, you know, things that could be delegated. And then there could be more um, communications and, and um, uh, doing more, I think what I've talked about before, more forward moving, more planning and progress around, you know, calling Cumberland Farms. You know, I've already called them like three times and left messages, but I want to call them like four times a day, you know, like, right. <laughs> and or, or whatever, like the things that I, I really would like to focus on economic development. I've talked mm -hmm. about that several times. I have yes. a plan for, you know, right after this is settled to, and I've been speaking to the, still with the Chamber of Commerce about having a meeting and mm -hmm. we're excited about that, getting that going, sort of tying it to now the complete streets work that's going to be coming out in early January. We have the final plan right. now. So, um, you know, so all of those things I hope to keep moving along. And I think having some staff to be able to delegate some of the minutia. And also I think that I'm hoping that will also keep us all in better communication as well. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I find challenging is in the midst of doing all of these things and trying to get ready for your meetings and then following up after the meetings and all of the other things is to 
you know, keep to communicate with you on a consistent and regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that with more staff, that would allow a little bit more time for that. I've tried to put together, you know, just some basic information for you guys, but it ends up being just like a big list. I'd right. like to, you know, do a little more work on, you know, breaking that down, but just yep. trying to do the work itself and report on it. is taking a lot of the time. Yep. Um, what support structure do you see as vital to carry out the duties of the town administrator? What qualities would you look for in, in the assistant? I, I know you just yeah, expanded I think, on it slightly here. I think that, you know, the, I, I feel at this point, I think anything would be positive. I mean, we have been working now. I've been, I mean, I was the sort of support person, but for since February, um, we've had just a short time, you know, obviously with some additional staffing. So we've been, you know, Pat and I for nearly a year now have gone through all the cycles, going through tax rate setting, budgeting, capital planning, licensing um, with limited staff. So I, I think that uh, we could continue to do that, David. I think it's critical that the board and the administration figure out what the best thing is for the commute for the town for for your office to be supported i think it's for all of us to decide together i feel like at this point i think we could go in the we've talked about having more board of health support we've talked mm -hmm. about having you know more clerical support we've talked about having planning support we've talked about having you know a other you know just having a, an assistant we've talked about having an executive I, I think what I want to work on, whatever the best thing is for the future, for, you know, all of us. It isn't, mm -hmm. I don't, I think I could be ad adaptable, I guess, to that. I would mm -hmm. want your input on it. Mm -hmm. I, we definitely need more staff, but no we doubt. need kind of all of those things. So right. I, I think <laughs> if, we could, <laughs> if we could look at that all together, I think the current structure of the assistant that we had conceived mm -hmm. most recently is, is still really a good structure. Right, I think too. if you wanted to continue with that, I think that would be you know, completely sufficient. You have, in fact, you've still had applicants, you know, that right. that, that's open and you have you know, really viable qualified applicants for that if those folks right. are still interested. So I think that would be you know, a fantastic way to go as well. Um, what areas of growth do you need professional development in? I mean, wow. what, 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 like doing this for the year, you're like, look back and think, oh what, what could I do? Yeah. What, what kind of areas would I want yeah. to grow in? Well, I think, you know, we've talked a lot. I'm, we're doing, I'm doing a lot of procurement. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think you asked me. I've never, I have never been in a town that has been able to um, get me certified because of the time it takes to be away from the town. I think it's like three days or five yeah. days and all honestly I've always been the chief procurement officer and I and I go to the individual trainings and I stay up to date um, so and I'm very well versed in the law I, I review it every single time I do right. a procurement yeah. um, but I've never been certified so that's something I think you know I'd love to to partake in that because there could be things there that I hear that that would be really helpful mm -hmm. um, I think again um, with the uh, you know with what John was talking about earlier with the cybersecurity, um, I, I still think one of the areas I'm not well versed in is um, the 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 sort of outreach of using social media. You know we haven't we've talked about having a policy here and things like that. So maybe right. um, outreach and communications like through those kinds of mechanisms, how to keep it civil, how to keep it professional, but still how to utilize Facebook. Um, you know, like some of the departments do, like really well, um, you know, on behalf of the town. Right. That's something I could use some yep. information on. And then just the legal updates, I think, are good to get periodically. So um, how does the town administrator position in Deerfield contribute to your overall growth, goals and growth? Well, I think one of the things that I, a lot of administrators in my at my point in their career where I'm at are moving to towns um, looking toward retirement trying to find um, you know looking for some money you know looking for higher salaries and nothing against you know nothing you know that's there's nothing wrong with that but I'm 
I'm at a point in my career where I want to have, um, I've, I've worked for over 20 years being a town administrator and I've worked in some really complex and difficult communities and I've learned so much and I've, I have a lot of education and experience and I want to utilize it to really help a town like grow and expand and, and, and prosper and soar and, and all of those things. Um, you know, that's, that's what I want for myself. That's what I sort of envision over my next, I'm, I've been in most towns, um, you know, to be honest, about five years. That's been kind of my, my, my time. And I think because I am a change agent, David, I've, I've been the first town administrator in some towns. I've been, I've come in after, after a vacancy. And I do tend to, um, I get bored easy. I like to make change and I like to grow and expand. So um, sometimes after about five years, you know, that's about the time mm -hmm. it takes. So I think with Deerfield, it feels like a perfect fit for me because, I mean, I've already been here for two. I feel like we're in the midst of a lot of the things that I'm talking about. And um, I mean, it just aligns perfectly where I feel like I'm, I'm at and wanting to use my skills to take Deerfield to sort of the next the next place that you guys need to be. And I think we've talked about, um, both in my interviews previously, but also just amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. about the challenges facing this town in the next, you know, say, decade or so, from climate resiliency, and but even the, the, the financial challenges with economic development and then the, the growth you're seeing, um, the residential growth, and um, you have a lot of challenges that, um, like fiscal challenges that you'll have to face. And I, that's also a huge strength of mine, budgeting, capital planning, um, fiscal planning, and economic development, community development, those are, those are strengths of mine. So I feel that it's really well positioned and well aligned for what Deerfield would be mm -hmm. looking at in the next you know, period of time too. Right. So that's how it fits in. And not to mention, it's like, I love the team here. I feel like I've become, um, you know, a part of that. I feel like um, um, I, I can't say enough about all the, the staff that work here. I think that, and, and the boards and committees, you guys, the elected and appointed boards and com committees are so dedicated. And even the constituents, you have a really dedicated constituency, like mm -hmm. people who really care about Deerfield and are interested in seeing it continue to, to grow and prosper and, and, and also to become you know, stable in the face of the changes that you're gonna be facing as well. Right. So. Um, talk a bit about town council. Would, do you think our flat fee system is working? Would you change that if you were continuing as a town administrator? Would you want more out of town council? Um, pay structure, that kind of thing? Well, I think that, um, I think the flat rate structure is now, um, you know, I think there was a year when you had it and you were really leaning into council mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't know what this, you know, this past year, what I found is that um, there was a quite a delay on getting responses from council. I think some of it was staffing. I feel like they were um, maybe, I, I know they lost a few people. They lost Sarah. They lost some folks. Mm -hmm. So I know they were staffing up, and but I, I, I don't know if the town's flat rate contract means that you just, you know what I mean, that mm -hmm. maybe you aren't, you wouldn't get the same, no, I don't want to say you're not getting the same level of attention, but I just think that um, this past year, there's been a couple times where we've had delays in getting responses. Um, I don't know if, if changing the structure of the contract would, would mitigate that or not, mm. or change that. I think some of it has been just, just the council's transition themselves, and maybe they needed to add staff. Yeah. Um, but I think this past year, um, we didn't utilize council right. as much for um, some of the things that we did in the that years past. That we have past. in our flat fee. 
versus other things. That Correct. Yeah. Right. Well, we have there's the, we don't the flat fee doesn't cover personnel right. and it doesn't cover litigation. Correct. So we have had a few issues with those things that have not been covered. Right. But I think overall we've gotten a lot done under right. the flat fee. So I mean, it, I mean, overall yeah. it's been a fantastic arrangement. I don't know if they'll want to continue it. I don't know right. what the what I their know. appetite will be it's going really forward. Not <laughs> What's that? This is not to their advantage. Not typically. Yeah. I don't think it this. I think two years ago, but this, this year, year I'm really better. so the other yeah. thing is I am trying to do like I said like get some big um, project some big things done that they would need to get in front of them to right. review and like we mm -hmm. did the training materials they mm -hmm. spent quite a couple months working on new training materials for our updated training um, you know so yep. but I think that I I I think council's been a wonderful support and I mean don't get me wrong every time I I uh, write they respond but sometimes it just takes a little nudge and mm -hmm. I think you know some there's there's varying priorities I'm yep. sure on their end as right. well so right do you have any questions of us mm. come on <laughs> I really, I don't. I don't think so. No. I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how you're going to finish this process, but I assume time will tell, <laughs> or you'll, you right. know. I think. Um, I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, fairly shortly, I believe. So we'll. Um, okay. I think we'll finish up and maybe have a discussion. And um, sounds like we'll probably take a vote tonight at some okay. point. Okay. All right. Well, thank you once again. Okay. Thank, thank you, Diana. Appreciate for all it. You've done. Thank you. Yep. Five thirty. Is it five thirty? Yeah. Yep. Caleb's still outside kicking the ball around. So. Oh God, I'm sorry. Huh? No, my son's still outside kicking the ball around. So. Oh. Um. Well, I'll just say uh, there's been um, those are two extremely qualified. Candidates. I mean, obviously, the screening committee did a great job. Um, you know, um, it's a hard decision for, for me. I'm, I'm really, um, I will struggle with this one, but I think um, I'm just so grateful for all the work Diana's done. I have not worked with Casey yet, but it's obviously she has, you know, the same work ethic and and, and care about municipal government that's very hard to find in other people. You know, there's not a lot of people that. You know, strive to go into town government and want to be town administrators and take on the immense pressures that that job holds. This job is very hard. I mean, just in my last several years of being on the board, understanding what it takes to actually facilitate a, a, a board which has different views on how they want to implement things in town and a um, and other interactions between our board and other boards department heads that want to, you know, we have very independent department heads, which is great in a town, they're very strong people, um, they know what they're doing, they're competent, we don't have to overlook a lot. Um, so it, it's, it's a challenge sometimes to kind of, as she said, na navigate those waters all the time. And um, I just think they, they both do a great job of doing that. So um, I'll leave it up to your, you know, what you have to say and what you want to do here. Well, I mean, I reviewed both candidates' applications and resumes. I've worked with both the candidates. Right. Um, I know their work history and their work experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel very comfortable moving Casey forward as a certified procurement officer. I think that's a requirement that um, she's had and she's mm -hmm. recertifying. And I think that's very important. Go moving forward with all the projects that we have. Yep. Um, we are certainly going to be spending a ton of money and um, so that's very important. So I'd like to make a motion for conditional, make an extend a, an offer of conditional employment um, based on suc successful uh, negotiation with her and mm -hmm. any stipulations that we might want to add to the contract. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No, um, you know, um, I've worked with both. I, um, and obviously, you know, to me, one of the biggest issues we have on the table right now is the nineteen million dollars for the for the uh, sewer project. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
we've done a good job that the uh, the first part of it came in pretty close to half price mm -hmm. so far. So that's that's really good. Um, but it's just making sure that we're managing things the way we're supposed to be um, and stuff, um, and making sure we're having a good, strong communication on all of it as well. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that communication has got to be the. Yeah key on all of this because we we just keep, we've got to work together very well mm -hmm. and we can't we can't we can't we could just it, we can't afford to have any energy spent other than moving forward and 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 we have a good board you know we the three of us want to work together mm -hmm. so well sometimes <laughs> so uh. but we so i think it's important i think we it, it's important to have the right person to do this um, how do you foresee um, a transition? Well, Diana, we have a contract with Diana, so we have to, um, you know, I would do this as a separate motion, to so make a motion to notify her of the 30 days. Um, and certainly, you know, I have no qualms about paying her for like a 45-day period or something so that, you know, there's some overlap or whatever. Well, yeah, um, I was... My concern is that if we move in that direction is that we have an immense amount of stuff that's going on that, that obviously Diana is knee deep in. And um, I know that Casey will want a choice to make, you know, if she accepts a job and we negotiate and all that, um, and she becomes the town administrator, we'll want to choose her assistant as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we gave her every opportunity and as long as she needs to feel like she's had a good transition from Diana or however that plays out. So I wouldn't want to cut it at 30 days, as you said, if it needs longer as they as they get through. But I would really leave that up to Casey. Right. I mean, and us, obviously. Yeah, we we uh, discussed all of it. But There's so many balls in the air right now. It's not like you can just have a weak transition and say, you're, mm -hmm. you're, we're fat, dumb, and happy. Yeah. Uh, because it won't happen. We have uh, we probably going to need at least 30 days, if not 45. Mm -hmm. And we've had, um, we certainly have the budget, um, mm -hmm. which you know, we all fought for and, yeah. and, and got secured. So we, it's not like we don't have the funding to support it's both of It's just contractually them. we have to give the 30 Understood. Days. Yep, and, exactly. And then, and then we could extend it from there right. if we needed to or right. if yep. Casey wanted it to. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I, that's what I would feel comfortable with, I guess. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. I, th I think we should make a formal motion on mm -hmm. the 30-day notice. Yes. And then make it clear that this is something that can be negotiated or as, almost done. as needed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll make that motion that we make a 30-day notice to Diana as required by contract. She's at correct. Correct. And that, that the rest of, you know, that we work out. God help Certainly, <laughs> 45 days is not is not, is mm -hmm. not without the realm, but right. whatever she and Casey need. Mm -hmm. Providing we can get all that done. Okay. Yeah. Second. One second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any further business tonight? We um, have the only I, the other thing is I just wanted to know if because um, I I'm going to housing court next week next Friday. Did Charlie get his check? I thought so. Okay, I, I you just, signed it. Uh, right. Well, sign I it? should go back and look. I signed all the warrants, um, and if it was in there, it was signed. Okay. Um, well, it was. I didn't. It was authorized over a month ago. So see it in the list. Yeah. If yeah. I remember, I'll and, go back and, and look at that. And it was reauthorized December eighteenth. Yeah. And because well, there seemed to be it, some holdup. It, it, it was supposed to been in the uh, warrant this time. Okay. Well, Dick, I'll Dick, check that. Dick I, submitted it with his. He did. Okay. Yeah. So I did sign the warrant and I went through it all. I just don't remember seeing Kanicki's name in there, but I'll look okay. again. All right. Okay. Well, I could have missed it. But. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're, that he shows up. Sure. And <laughs> he's not going to show up if he hasn't been paid Absolutely. for work. Absolutely. No. So that we he have, did two months ago. Um, so a couple of things. We have a meeting set for um, January 10th. Mm -hmm. I saw that it was at 4 o'clock here instead I've of 5. I had 5, five o'clock. Yeah, I've got 5 in my calendar, too. Let's just change that to 5 because it's hard for me to get here. Oh, is it f 5 or 4? 
Was it five? I have five in my calendar. Uh, what, yeah, was that's it four. Why? Because we were because I was away, and that was like the soonest time we could meet. I I said I had five o'clock in my calendar. I do too. Okay, so let's just do a five o'clock on Friday the tenth. Yeah. Okay, and then is that okay with you, Dave? Yep. Okay. I can't remember the need for that meeting, but I think we were trying to. Finish well, up something last time, and it was going to be a long time before because I'm away the eighth. Right. I, I and think we're going to meet the 15th again at our normal 6 o'clock. Right. O well, and I, ha I was in Boston on the 8th anyway, so I couldn't make oh, it. Oh, okay. It's, you, you and I were both away. Oh, so wait. it was okay. we couldn't have, you know, there was no quorum. Yep. And then we have uh, 15th and the 29th and February 12th and February 26th as our regular meetings at 6 p.m. Right. going forward. And then we have MMA on the 23rd. So I guess by that January 10th meeting, we'll hopefully have gone into um, negotiations and have come up with a contract um, so we could work behind the scenes right. to get that done to approve on the 10th if needed. Um, right. Yeah, that shouldn't take long. Okay. Yep. So we'll have to discuss that. Do you want to dedicate one member of your board to negotiate a contract? Yes. Exactly. Who, who, does anybody want to do that or do you want me to do it or do you, it's up to you guys? I, I can do it. Do you, do you have the time in the next week, John? Yeah, absolutely. I'm around all week. Okay. So you and okay, great. So um, Thanks, I would make a motion to have Dave and yeah, um, and I'll second kind of that. Go between those Thank two. you. Great. Yeah. Thank you and for volunteering. Let us know if you have any questions on it. While yeah. You're on it. Um, Actually, well, I what you can do if there's well. any questions, you can just you know um, ask Trevor and I. You know, you be the in between. So that we don't have any open meeting law mm -hmm. issues. I can um, give you a copy of the latest one. To, yeah, that'd be great. Be so great start you could kind of figure out from there what yeah. you want to do. Um, any any other business? I would just like to wish everybody a very happy new year, and I hope you're all, all safe. safe again. Call for a ride if you're out. There's Ubers. There's chief of police will come get you. Like. Or you don't want him to come get you, actually. So, <laughs> or his men, so, or women. So, um, anyways, I just hope you all have a wonderful, I leave that one wonderful, <laughs> new, <laughs> wonderful New Year's, and um, this meeting is adjourned. Okay.